Hi guys, welcome to Edge Effect for my culture. I am sitting in this ocean of pumpkins. Let me stand so that you can see me better. In an ocean of pumpkin plants, and I have a millet growing here. What's a millet doing amidst pumpkins? Uh, there is one more millet plant there. This one does not have seeds yet. There is one more millet plant there that is full of seeds. Let me walk over there. You can't hear me from there. Just watch me hop over and show you a full seed head. Oh, right here. Right here is a head of millet. Now, what are millets doing in my pumpkin patch? Let's sit down and talk about it. Yeah? So, before we talk of my millet, let's talk of something that you all might have seen. In any grain crop, uh, fields of rice or wheat or even millets, you see these things, you know, uh, there's this uh, scarecrows, these little stuffed human uh, looking things that are kept there. Why are they kept there? To keep the birds away. Why to keep the birds away? Because the birds will eat your corn or millet or rice or you know, paddy or wheat or whatever. The grain crops, the birds will attack them and eat the seeds away. And that's why uh, scarecrows are kept. As a permaculturist, when you look at that, you immediately see an opportunity. Birds in permaculture are a beneficial energy if you know how to use them. Birds are attracted to millets. In nature what happens is that fruits and veggies are full of water and minerals but the sugars and starches are very rare and salts are very rare. When you have either salts or sugars or star starches, birds and other things rush there to eat them. Of course along with uh, uh, insects and other things. For proteins they get insects you know, uh, they can eat other stuff. But when you have a crop like millet, birds will come, come and devastate uh, that crop and that's why people put up scarecrows. What that teaches us as a permaculture observer is uh, that birds are attracted to millets. So what uh, uh, we do is use that fact of nature. Now, when, you, when people plant, when the average uh, farmer plants his uh, pumpkins, what he does is, he gets in his tractor or uh, you know, on his bullocks and plows the field, then gets pellets of fertilizer, of DAP, uh, that is phosphate and nitrogen and urea and all those things and puts them all over his farm and tills that in. Sometimes it depends on what kinds of fertilizer you use and then he plants in his pumpkins so that the pumpkins get all that fertility. Now, for a permaculturist, that's a quite a big no-no and quite a, quite a bit unnecessary in most cases. We need, of course, fertility for our plants and the more fertile the soil, the better the pumpkins are, the better the crop is. So for us, what, what I have done on my farm is that uh, for me, I don't uh, need to bring in any fertilizer. Nature brings in the fertilizer and drops it wherever I need it. And to do that, I use the millets. Ready. So, wherever I planted my pumpkins, I broadcast a few uh, millets, I don't even plant them usually and the same irrigation for sprouting of pumpkins is enough to sprout my millets and once millets sprout and they start putting out seeds, birds are attracted to these millets and they come there, they eat the millets and they find refuge from the hot sun in the little trees and nooks and crannies that I have and in the pumpkins it's themselves. They'll go sit in the pumpkin bush and poop there. I have observed bird manure, bird droppings near every little clump of millets I have. So millets is not a nitrogen fixing crop or is it? For me it is a nitrogen crop, it is a phosphorus crop because it is attracting birds and nature herself in all her grace and you know and beauty is bringing the phosphates, is bringing the nitrogen right to my plants. I am not broadcasting them. I am not buying them from uh, 
you know the petrochemical companies that produce their fertilizers with huge pollution behind it no for me the birds bring it and drop it and the birds that are attracted jump onto any caterpillars that are there for their protein input and they have their protein and their starch their full meals in my pumpkin patch and they drop their manure generously around each little clump of uh, millets in my uh, permaculture day video on what i was growing on my farm i showed you a few millet plants and said that i was growing millets for a special reason and this was it and this is it i have parrots coming here and eating them sparrows pigeons uh what not a lot more birds whose names i don't even know coming here and eating my millets and dropping manure and you can see the abundance happening i can actually go walk around the clumps of uh uh millets and see bird droppings and see the fertility in the soil or or the various months uh, that have occurred so that is how you kind of think of putting elements together a bird attracting millet crop has become a nitrogen provider for my pumpkin patch in his video of global gardener bill wallison says that's how you come up with gills he he says it's not about specific plants it's about a plant that requires nitrogen or a particular nutrient a plant that is a nitrogen fixer or provides that nutrient a plant that supports these two and for me i have lucina to support birds sitting on the branches and for birds to nest in i have little bushes and shrubs here and there for birds to eat and poop i have the millets and to consume all that fertility i have my pumpkins and i am getting great abundance with this guild this is not a guild you will find in any textbook this is not a guild that the agriculture department will suggest to you this is a guild that one can come up with by observing the various functions that occur in nature these are ecological functions right nature provides these ecological functions and if we know how to use them it reduces our input costs it increases the ecological stability of our place it provides me pest control it provides me fertility and abundance all at the same time and that is how you come up with gills and that's how you observe nature in permaculture and utilize it right hope you this helps you in your in your own gardens also um plant a few uh, millets here and there and birds will be attracted and when they are attracted yeah they will nibble a little bit on your tomatoes um if you don't want that that's a different thing but i don't really mind them taking a few tomatoes in return to the great nutrition that they provide through their manure now there is cotton crop which the birds don't eat there is the chili crop which the most birds don't eat uh and there are there are pumpkins and there are uh, cucumbers the indian dosakai cucumber dosakai melon crop none of these are attacked by birds adding a millet a handful of millets into the farm itself you know every few feet will give you this attraction of birds and they they settle down and they pretty much take care of your uh, pumpkin patch or your chili patch and its nutrient requirements and by the end of your crop your land doesn't get poor it gets richer and richer in fertility hope you learn permaculture you keep on learning permaculture and come up with your own gills and share them with the world uh, once you find success with them so that we can really take this science forward and as humanity get out of the nonsense that we have we are in you know the nonsense of getting fertilizers and pesticides from hundreds of miles away with huge pollution to grow a few pumpkins where nature will do it for you if you do things right so keep on learning permaculture keep on enjoying having great time thanks for watching edge effect permaculture dj signing off